for, for you to be here. And our members of clergy who are also here, thank you very much. All of you, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. God is good. And all the time, Asante Sana. Now, um, I, would, I would be very brief. I'll be very brief this morning uh, because we will have time to talk. I want to, I want to shorten this morning's session for, for obvious reasons. One is that uh, we do not want to preempt the views that our members of public may have to this ad hoc committee. And I want to emphasize that this morning, the purpose of us coming here was to put the ball squarely in the court the third time in this journey. And then we leave the committee to do the work that's supposed to do. So probably what uh, our chairperson will do and maybe should have done was to inform everyone that this is just the beginning of the consultations, of the discussions on what do our people think that this city that we have conceptualized should be for them, should do for them, should be like for them. And from Monday morning, from Monday morning all the way through, there will be sittings for various groups in the entire of uh, thicker fraternity as far as we spread so that each one of us can get an opportunity to come and get heard. Each sector, business, our traders, Matatu fraternity, the Boda Boda people, all our other investors, you'll be invis invited sequentially. Our clergy too, everyone should get that opportunity and I want to be urging uh, our, our ad hoc committee to make that as public as possible so that all of us can get that opportunity, come and say all the things you want to be on record for that final day when all of us can raise our hands and say, yes, we agree. Subsequent to that, today we can probably just lay the roadmap by saying we have lit the green light that this work can, can proceed. And that's why I'm, I'm happy to have heard all the comments that we've had here. About two years ago, two, two and a half years ago, I sat in a room in Nairobi with a team of consultants. I was preparing for, for my campaigns. By then, I had already made up my mind that I was going to run for governor of Kiambu County. So I took up a team of professionals and a team of some of our people here in Kiambu County. And together, I poured out what my thoughts were and what I wanted, if I was to be governor, to do. So upon my request, I asked them, can we embark on a journey where you can put my thoughts into a document that is precise, simple, and organized that I can tell my people when I go to look at them in the face and tell them that I want them to give, them, to give me an opportunity to be the governor, that you can concisely put my thoughts in this document. So we sat in a room, I remember, uh, one afternoon in, in Nairobi, I had good people, and I must thank, for the, I must thank them uh, for the outcome of what happened. I had a few, two professors from the University of Nairobi who are also members of our community here. I had uh, some 
public servants of long standing and, and also people who served largely in previous governments at national level, the last three administrations, including the Quebec administration, when we mooted the Vision 2030 for this country. And I had, I had a few of those people. So I had my session, and I poured my thoughts on what I thought about the entire of this county. So we would start from Larry, and I would tell them, how do I see Larry? What would I want to see in Larry? And then we went around the entire county. We came to Kabete, down all the way to Kiambu. And because I had had the good fortune, for which I must thank most of you as members of this community, for having given me the opportunity to serve as a senator for 10 years. I had a good, I had good imagination, I had a good view of how we would want to see this county look like. So around the whole circle, and then we got to Georgia, and then finally, after all the issues I raised in Georgia, then to Thika. And when we got to Thika, we really had an intense talk with my team. Because at first for them to buy my idea that there is merit, that we can elevate the status of this town as it is, and gain benefits that are tangible by converting this into a city, we had to have, to have quite some engagement. My, reason, my reasoning was simple. And I believe we can still put it on the table and validate it this morning. As my good friend, Mze Geto Wakahengeri said this morning, when they fought, in the caves in the Rugo River, he used one word. He said they had a vision. In my argument and discussion with my team, I placed thicker the way it is on the table for them. And I told them that it is not just coincidental, and this is the persuasion that's what I would still want to persuade you this morning. That it was not accidental that Thika is what it is today. It, is, it was not an accident that our friend, the acting managing director of, uh, of Del Monte, that Del Monte in a whole country called Kenya, found itself in Thika. Indeed, where you are sitting this morning, for a man to have been, made a decision to take his hard-earned money and invest it in a hotel of this size, in a place called Thika, was not accidental. And all those industries that line up this road all the way down, it isn't by accident. There was there was intent in the minds of those people. When they put all those pieces of what we call today opportunity together to have this community that works and has worked out the way it is to be called Deka. But then, when that happened, and we had what we would call the motion that has created what we see today, my question was, for, that, for us, the intervening generations or people, did we continue with that spirit? Did we continue with those thoughts? Did we do what they did? Did we, did we continue with that temple? And if we did, are we in the right place? If we did not, where would we have been? That was my argument. I'm just bringing it back. I hope it's Dr. Kagiri around today, this morning. Now, 
Dr. Kagiri was one of my, he served in the team of uh, Kenya Vision 2030. He was one of my, the members in my team. And, and, and so in the course of that engagement, you know, I brought out my argument that if you go and take stock today, then that was 2022, of the industrial growth of Dika then, and backwards, you had more activity, you had more benefit backwards from when it was done than moving forward. That indeed, we have had a retrogression since then. So what is it that we have not done up to now that should have seen this be a better place? And lastly, then we got to an assessment. What, what are the current pro factors that would say we make our argument a sensible argument that we have got the opportunities, that we have got the chance, that indeed we have what it takes to make Thika a city? And I can take just two minutes to have that discussion with you this morning, and we agree. If you start first historically, if you look at the growth of any city, and you can use the Kenyan cities and towns that have grown and blossomed to be success stories and economic hubs for communities. One of the obvious principles, right from Mombasa, all the way up to Nairobi, going to Nakuru, all the way to Eldoret, and finally Kisumu. Is that they all share one common trait? Common trait that they are all placed directly adjacent to busy communication corridors that have then made them those advantageous hotspots where business can start to happen when minds, opportunity, and talent meet and coagulate. And that's how a small town like Nakuru was born. That is the history of Eldoret. That is the history of Kisumu. So what about Thika? And Thika, one of my, one of my people, I think it was Salome or Kagiri, was writing some notes to me, and I was smiling when I read your notes, because you are saying exactly the same thing that I argued those days. You know, Vika is squarely placed on the Trans-African Highway, that you can use this road to go all the way to Ethiopia, and to Sudan, and to any other country. And you can use this road to go to Malawi. You can go to Zambia using this road. You can go all the way up to South Africa using this road. So, in terms of opportunity for business and growth and market, we are not looking. We have the natural advantage as Dika. And that is why, by the way, all the other industries that were here blossomed. That's why they did. If you ask the, the GM, Del Monte today, among his advantages, he counts. He counts that he can package his uh, pineapples and within a short time, they're in the airport, they're on the railway, and they're headed to, for export. So we are not lacking. Two, currently here, and has been said here by many of my friends who spoke before me, look at the opportunity we have at the number of young people, I hear uh, now you have baptized them, that beautiful word, Gen Z's. But even, even before then, over and over again, how many young people are we spanning out in Vika across all manner of talent and training with all the universities and other technical institutions that are all housed here in Vika? There is no other single town in the entire of Kenya that has got the advantages that we have here in terms of human resource and capital. None. But have we harnessed it? 
And then suddenly you may want to ask yourself, and uh, probably to answer one of those, that question that uh, has been posed by DG or posed by everybody here. How did we become an attraction that you find that Vika, if you went to ask individually people here, where are you born? Then you find that that one is born in Katundu, the other one is born in Kandara, the other one is born in the other place, and we have all found ourselves in this place. There is a reason. Because those advantages put together have become the magnet that has put all of us in the same place. But urging us to do a little bit more and a little bit better. To push that effort that was put and that mind that incepted Vika then to a higher level and to a better place. And that is why in my manifesto, when we came up with a document, we came, came up with that document and we said that when it comes to Thika, we are going to convert Thika into an industrial smart city. Industrial, because we already had it, we, already need, we only needed to do more and smart because we had already started and we have what it takes to make it even smarter, if you like that expression. A few months later, I was on the road. I was on the road here, campaigning. I would get on, on uh, my campaign truck, and when I got into the, into sit into Thika, I had a team of young men. And uh, I believe in my, in my discussion today, I should have brought one of those young men. There's one young man who had just retired, he had just retired from, uh, no, not retired, rather, he just graduated from uh, the National Youth Service. And I would carry that heap of booklets. When we arrived, where is he? Is he around? That's okay. So one of my young men who was very quick on, on his feet, I would call him, get him a bundle of these, of these uh, documents. And I'll tell him first, before I start speaking, run into the crowd and make sure that everybody has got a copy of this. And then I'll climb up and start speaking. And he'll do, he'll do exactly that. Within five minutes, as people do the introductions, they play a bit of music, everybody is waving a copy of that document. Coincident, coincidentally, because of his work, I baptized him manifesto. <laughs> and, and even today, he's still called manifesto. That young man, when he was distributing uh, that document, and I would rise up to speak to the people here in Deka, I would tell the people all the things that uh, we are saying we are going to do, we'll clean up the streets, we'll build markets, we'll do this, and then I would finalize by telling the people that we are going to convert Deka into an industrial smart city. And everybody would pause and wait and listen. Because you know, when you come up with those uh, words of an industrial smart city. Now it looks like you're going to blow up people out of their places because <laughs> they're heavy words. So let's break this down into, into chewable bites in two minutes. What it is that uh, I had in my mind and I prepared to do. When you give me the job to be the governor, Three, three weeks later, I had the opportunity to have a meeting with the president. So the president told me, Governor, before you come, prepare yourself with a document. Because I want, after our discussion, I want to see what is it precisely you want to come and discuss with me about Kambu. Have your copy, have copies that you can give to cabinet secretaries that I may want you to lie us with. So I prepared my document. When I, when I arrived here, there, with my, my document, I shared the, the copy with him. I had my copy as we spoke. Flipped through the pages, and then we got to the issues that I wanted to discuss about Dika. And I told him, Your Excellency, for Dika, my decision is that I want to convert that town 
into a city. And there are things that I intend to do that I need your support about. So first thing, for us to have penned, have we made progress? Do we have milestones that we can say that we have started to hit? And how do we continue with the journey? So first, I told him we have to resolve the issue of water in Thika. So he asked me how. And I told him we have built, we have built a dam in Karemenu. That dam, as has been built, has excluded Thika town as one of the beneficiaries. Yet, it is one of the biggest water projects around Thika. We had a capacity then in Karemenu of about 70,000 uh, metric uh, cubic uh, liters of, uh, of water. So I told him, if you just add another 20,000, the requirement for Thika is about 22,000 cubic uh, meters of water. What is the cost? We had worked out the cost. It's about 5.7 billion. So that morning, before we left, we agreed with him. Can you give us the 5.7 billion? That morning, the president called Treasury and told them, Governor tells me there are funds that you had that were intended for water. Because I had done my research, and I knew there were funds that were supposed to have been given. And he said, release those funds. So subsequently, those funds were released. Karemeno's capacity was increased now to about 99,000 cubic meters of water. And today, <laughs> the thing that remains for the people of Vika to benefit fully from that water is now just proper reticulation of water. And that we are prepared to do. We have set aside funds to ensure that that reticulation happens and water rolls down. Two, then I told him, we cannot have a city in Thika if the chaos and mayhem we have when you just approach Thika is going to be the story of the day. And I told him, the other thing that you can help us with is give us funds to do this road from where we meet, we exit the highway, all the way down past to the small town called Kolping as you head towards Garissa. We worked out the cost. He wrote a note, sent it to the ministry and to Kenha and sent me a copy of the document. And as of now, most of you know, those that have followed up, that indeed the research, the drawings, and all the other preliminary stages of dealing this road have already started and mapping has been done. What now we are waiting for is just the funding to have this road dealed all the way down and we'll have a smooth highway down all the way towards Kolpe. That's our second step. <laughs> then moving from there, we also, there are things also that we must do ourselves as a county government to ensure that we also make this a reality. We have been waiting for what we call our Kenya Urban Support Development Funds. This year in Kiambu, we have been allocated about close to 2 billion shillings. Here in Vika, as you know, most of you uh, that are residents here, Vika in its municipality status has been sharing funds with Juja to ensure that funds are adequate to change the things we want to change in Thika, we had to upgrade Juja itself to municipal status so that Juja can receive their own independent funds and leave the funds for Thika for only Thika's use. So this year, other than sharing those funds that should have been shared, 295 million, which would have been split to Juja, now that 295 million is available for Thika only this year. So what have we done? With those, that 295 million, we have already had public participation and conceptualized a complete upgrade of the town 
with NMT facilities all the way from the entrance down into the town, all the way down, so that we are going to be having proper drainage, cable, and street lighting in the entire all the way down towards Makongeni of Vika. So we have, got, we have made good progress to convert Vika. Of course, when it comes to the other wards, like in uh, Gatuanyaga, we've also uh, included funds for Gatuanyaga, ensuring that we also meet the same standards within Gatuanyaga. We have done the same for uh, Makongeni in that area. Uh, the biggest beneficiary is that this gentleman here in this town, because he happens to be the one who is in town anyway, by coincidence and uh, all the way down to Goliba. So we will be benefiting all those people. Thirdly, from our own county funds, we have allocated sufficient funds to ensure that we deal with the issue of proper lighting in this county. You heard when one of my officers was speaking here and said that uh, when I decided to have the policy that, that requires that all public lighting be solar in Kiambu County, we had a bit of backlash. Because after launching, two weeks later, most of our facilities went, went dark. Because Kenya Power then <laughs> was of the mind that we have denied them business, so they want to fight us back. They went disconnecting some of our facilities. Yet, of course, as you know, <laughs> some of the facilities, you know, public hospitals and others are still reliant on grid power. But for street lighting, for street lighting, and when I was launching, I gave out the statistics and the numbers which I believe all of you, if you don't have, you could go to our website, you find, and we can share out, even as you convert this into a, into a city. Kiambu County has been expending about one billion shillings per year on power only. One billion per year. Our hospitals, our markets, our street lights, our public offices, all of them, we have been coughing out close to a billion shillings every year. So uh, we decided that it is time to start changing. We have brought in enough street lights for the entire county. Our first batch, we brought about 4,000. We have another 4,000 in the high seas. We are intending to install 12,000 this year and ensure that we convert the entire of public lighting we have now the reserve for Dika, which we intend to have uh, here in Dika and ensure that anything about that street is dark, huko stima yimekatoa, ama huko hakuna stima, that we put as history. That we are counting as one of our major milestones also in ensuring that we are on the journey to making Dika a smart city. <laughs> on public health, on public health, we have intentionally decided that Vika is going to be exceptional when it comes to our attention to public health. In each of our wards currently, in Gatuanyaga, where this gentleman comes from, we have already rolled out and awarded tenders to upgrade to level three all the two medical facilities in his ward. In uh, Makongeni ward, we have also not only awarded a tender to upgrade the existing level two facility to a proper level three, but we have also already started construction of a new one. So we have two ongoing facilities uh, in, in uh, his place. Uh, Moshimua here is a beneficiary to the thick uh, uh, level four hospital, which we are also in the course of upgrading. And uh, for Moshimua there in the ward of, uh, in his ward, hospital ward, we are building a new facility at Athena and a new facility at Goingoa. So that means that, God willing, when we are done with this cycle, then we'll have taken care of ensuring that every ward has got a level three facility that is accessible within less than 500 meters of any resident. That is our vision of this particular county. And we have started the work already. 
in trade, in trade here in Thika, and I'm only referring to Thika so that we, we, we can start to paint the picture. Are we on the journey? Do we believe in the vision? Are we, are we just talking about wishes and hopes, or have we started to walk the journey? That is the case I'm making as we speak this morning. In, in trade, before we could even fly the flag, we started with this gentleman here. And uh, when I, I took my first tour to Zika last year, I was amazed to find that you have got such a high number of our traders and women who are doing one of the most beneficial business businesses, actually the hub that supplies almost all the non-perishable foodstuffs in the entire of this, county, of the, of this town, in his market, Jamuhuri, that those women live under deplorable conditions. That their, their, their market stalls, you could shake it like this and it will come down. And they've been there for years. So I started on an immediate journey then, and we agreed, and started on the upgrade of the, of the, of the market. We've done uh, halfway the ground, and the rest, now we are going up to finish that market. In another six months, we are done with, with his market. We went down to his place in Makongeni. As most of you know, although there's been a bit of politics, but that should not mind, you should remind, that's not the story of today. Then markets, we went to uh, his place. I had agreed with the president in our first sitting that national government was going to contribute 400 million for the market in Makongeni. The county committed 150 million, and that market we are going to be awarding. We are doing another market also in his place in Kiganjo. In uh, my friend's place again, the market there in, uh, in Kiandutu, uh, again we started the market. All the way down now to uh, Gatuanyaga, his market is awarded, and the one in Goliba. What am I saying? That in trade, in trade again, we are ensuring that all our traders, formerly who are in markets, that we have renewed the markets at the county level and that one that we have been given by, by national government. For our young guys here, and because I've seen chairman, uh, our hawkers, uh, my friend, uh, yeah, I've seen now, and the chairman here, I've seen you guys here, you know what we are doing also. Because we want to create a proper environment within the, within the town whereby the former business trader who has a shop can feel comfortable in his shop. They know that they pay a license so they can trade. But also, our hawker can have the opportunity also to do their business in a right atmosphere. And so we intend to separate the two and we have taken steps in Dika to clean up the town and ensure that we give respect and dignity to our hawkers and also the shopkeepers. How are we doing that? I started the, awarded the contract for the construction of uh, our stadium here and came up with the concept that that stadium, as we build the wall, because that's why we have majority of our hawkers, the wall of the stadium now comprises of modern trading kiosks for our hawkers. 380 of them are going to be housed there. We are not charging a single penny for you to come and uh, for us to build. We are building and invite you to come in. So all that circle, we are having lower level and upper level of modern trading kiosks for all of you. Other than burning in the sun, in the street, come in. We have a good place for you. Keep your wares there. Sell from there. In the evening, lock your shop, then go home and come tomorrow. We are doing that in a stadium. We have agreed that as we are upgrading our bus uh, parks, our, our, our bus stages, which we have done in Makongeni, we have started. The one in town, we are starting, we are going to award. Even in those bus parks, we are going to do the same, same thing to build the same modern kiosk. So even around the stage, all the hawkers around there, you don't carry your muzigo to, to your home after trade. Keep it in your shop. We'll give you a shop, sell from there. And then we clean, clean up the environment, wakati to Maliza Kujenga hiyo. So I believe also Pandehio, our young people there who are hooking, we have also taken steps to ensure that muko saasawa kwa ile kazi enye munafanya. On our work with, local, with drainages, uh, we've agreed with uh, my friend there, Korea, 
and this team that that we are also awarding together with the NMT so that this town will be a proper town. So what I'm saying simply is this, that uh, this journey that we decided that we are going to take with my team here to convert Vika into an industrial smart city, we have started, we have started, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, probably just to, just to close, because uh, I'm speaking in the presence of a former mayor and another former mayor, and uh, other legislators, and of course also most of you who have lived in this town. This, this is not going to be an easy walk, for that matter. This I want to assure you, and uh, committee here also, uh, be, be certain ab about that, because we have to accommodate the diverse views of everyone. People have different opinions. People will have different uh, notions. But if we can convince our people to see the bigger picture and what we have done and what we are doing, then we can achieve uh, what we intend to achieve. This, uh, the prison here, I had a conversation with uh, the president and we have also agreed then that we have learned that we, we agreed and signed with Del Monte to seed 690 acres to the county, which was already done. And we had an extra 100 acres before. In the allocations for the land that we have done out of what the county government got, we have allocated 30 acres to accommodate this prison and move this prison from the CBD out there to out there. So that this land that is in the CBD can be used for more uh, valuable and useful uh, development to deal with the actualization of, uh, of the city. Just around there, as most of you know, then we have the housing that is ongoing, ongoing and I think I agree with what Mwanjiro was saying, with the teams, that the people there that, that have owned and lived in our estates. We are going to also have a conversation with you, the house owners who have been tenants of the county. And we'll agree on what formula do we develop or do you develop the houses such that you can also have your own home within your city. Because I know that has been a big debate again, that people are going to be kicked out, people are going to be expelled. There is no one who is going to expel you from your own home. You have been here. And I want to take you from what uh, my friend there was saying when Wakati na nyinyi ni watu wakubwa mlikuwa mnadanganywa kama watoto na mnagani bwana. You know <laughs> those lies that were there before that at thika ikikuwa city mkate itakuwa shilingi 200. And you ask yourself kwani mkate Nairobi ni pesa ngapi? Nairobi is the oldest city in this country. Bread still costs the same cost of bread anywhere else in the country. So <laughs> those, those stories that people spin around, that uh, this is going to be expensive, that's going to, that we don't want, we cannot wish our people to live in slums. We want to upgrade those slums, and we have an elaborate program to remove people, our people from slums. But even in Nairobi, there are slums. Amanam Nagani, there are still slums in Nairobi. The work we have to do is to lift our people from that poverty and give them a better life. That's what we are saying. We have very elaborate programs with the uh, Waziri here uh, under two programs. One program is called uh, KISIP. And where not only are we issuing title deeds to all those that are in the slums, we are due to issue more than a thousand title deeds to all those people that are in formal settlements, the so-called slums. Now what does that do? That gives that person who is in the slum an opportunity to own where they live. And so they have got good reason to invest and make it a better place. So within no time once you have issued the title deeds, you're going to start seeing transformation in Kiandutu, in Kiangombe, and all those other informal dwellings when somebody has got their own title deeds. I have committed our water companies, water and sewerage companies, to domicile themselves in all those informal settlements. Vika Water, the Wasco, has been now in Makongeni and Kiandutu for more than six months. 
And my instruction is simple. By the time you leave that place, there will be no sewage flowing in ordinary citizens' drainage. That kids are not going to be jumping and playing inside sewer, raw sewer water in the drainages. And that has happened. We have changed Kendu to now probably more than 60% we have done. By another six months, we are done with the entire of that Kendutu. We are in Makongeni, and we'll finish the entire of these places to make them habitable. So that work is, uh, is also ongoing to ensure that we realize this dream. On the allocation of the land that we have, what have we done? And uh, you saw on that, uh, you, saw, you saw on the, on, on, on the, on the presentation there. We have allocated land that we have, and I believe we have done so sensibly, sensibly, to ensure that we can accommodate almost all interests that would help this town elevate and grow into the city that we envisage that is going to be. The land that we have uh, out there in uh, Del Monte, former Del Monte, that's Gatuanyaga and the other regions, Goliba, Goliba, we have allocated fair land to build affordable housing where our people can now go and afford houses as we grow. We have allocated enough land to accommodate industry, investors, and I'm sure all of you are sold on this particular point, that the number of young people, men, women, and even elderly who are employed by Del Monte today, if you had another five Del Montes in Vika, how many young people would be benefic benefiting? Hundreds of thousands, for that matter. And that's why we are accommodative of that idea, that the land we have allocated there, about 350 acres for the EPZ, is going to bring in employment for our young people. We allocated a strip of land also as we grow, so that when investors come, and even ours who will grow from here, that we can make it a reality that an investor can fr fly their fresh produce or even their produce from here in Dika without having to go to Nairobi. And that is why we have allocated land for a, for a, for a near strip there, that you can land a cargo plane there and take off with your produce from here in Dika, right there in Del Monte. <laughs> then, of course, we have allocated land there for other uh, socioeconomic uh, activities including our church's bishop, so that the people who live there, <laughs> then you, they can even come and go to church there. We have business uh, hubs in the land that we have allocated within, within that area, uh, so that finally we can make it a, re a reality. So I want just to assure you on that one very thorny question of the land, that we are operating completely above board. I want to declare myself here this morning before this city. Because this is something that uh, has been a big issue here in Dika. And I've said it before in other public forum. Part of the challenges you have been seeing me going through as a governor with other legislators started because of my stand and position that there is no public land that is going to be handed over or given behind or under the table to any person, elected or powerful influen or influential, if that land does not belong to them. Public land is public land, and that is my position. <laughs> that's, that's my position. And I've, I've had to go through hell, if you like, because of that, but I'm ready for more hell. But we will take that position until the end. And if God gives me another five years, I will say gladly, thank you, Father. Thank you, God. And I will live the other five years in the same, with the same policy. Because, as Muse said, if you ask Muse today when they fought for freedom, how many acres of land he took, he only has what he worked for up to today. That is when people would have grabbed, grabbed land. Today, I have put my foot down. That Del Monte land is part of my problems, even today. Because there are people who, when that land was given, thought that it is the easiest land to grab. I said no. It is not going to be grabbed. I am not going to leave office and leave a rotten record under my, under my head or my banner. Let anyone who wants to grab it, grab it after I'm gone. But God, God willing.
we will have put it to use that it is not going to be taken by anyone. And that's my position. That's my position. So your land is in safe hands for the, for, for, for the time being when, when the governor is there. And we will ensure that as we live, we have secured it. To Kopomoja Jameni. Yes, that's how we stand. That's where we stand. So uh, that we have also taken care of. So I want to conclude, uh, because I know we've said a lot, that by, by requesting our committee here, please accommodate every view. Every view. Nothing is so hard to negotiate on dis or discuss. Even the most radical of thoughts. Vika is a community for all. And I want to say that as, as uh, the governor. This is not Kikuyu land. This is not Luo land. This is not European land. This is not Kamba land. This is land for our people of Kenya in Dika. And so, accommodate everyone's view in this town. In, in this town. Ensure that you listen to everyone. Because that is the community we are today, gentlemen and ladies. And those of you that have still not been sold to this idea, we better get used to it now. Hapa tuko na wajalu, tuko na waluya, tuko na wazungu, kamahawa, tuko na wakikuyu. For us to grow a community that works, it has to be and carry the banner of the Republic of Kenya. Our land, the one that Geto Wakahengeri fought for. The one that was fought by, for by our people. So let us also not have those uh, small sectarian uh, you know, views that say, Sisi, it will happen, Apale. This accommodate every view as a citizen of this republic who is a resident here in Dika. If we have to discuss to expand boundaries, uh, as was being asked by, by, by DG, then we would not refuse if Moranga offers us more land to go across the road, you know, and say that they want to be a part of, you know, Dika. We'll be happy, you know. Uh, but uh, if it still remains there, as just as happens in no other uh, establishments, the activities and, and all the benefits that will be here will benefit those that are far and wide. Somebody in uh, Garissa, somebody in uh, Sudan will be happy because they know that when they arrive in this place, they're in the city that they want to be and they can transact all their businesses here. So I want to thank all of you for having come this morning and uh, ask uh, my friend Sylvia to lead the team well of our ad hoc committee and do so. I want to also say to you that we'll be interacting with Sylvia and her team. Sylvia has the capacity to lead this team and do the work that we did. She, was, she happened to have served in Senate when I was in Senate with me. And when, when uh, Nakuru brought their charter uh, and their city request, we were together in Senate that particular time. And of course, all the rigors and battles and whatever uh, we did together. And until finally, we gave Nakuru a city. We have no excuse to be beaten in this race by Eldoret, unless you people want us to be beaten. Hakuna sababu yenye Eldoret wanafaa kutushinda kwa hii kazi ya kuhakikisha kwamba tumepata city yetu ya hapa watu wetu wadhika. So do what you have to do, uh, architect uh, Kasanga, and you have a good team. We believe that uh, all will be well. I want to implore upon our political leaders locally, support this team to the best that you can, because you're here, so that they can achieve. And I'm sure, God willing, once this is done, we will look back in history. The way all of you, I could see how mesmerized all of us are when Mzegetu is speaking. Because you want to hear the story of a hero. And so how will it be when you count yourself as one of those heroes who sat here this morning and along the journey enabled that we realize this dream that now we have a city in Vika that has transform transformed the lives of so many people even those that you will never see in your lifetime. So that's my request that to shikane pamoja, to fanya hii kazi, hii kazi malizike vizuri, na tupate city ya sisi wote kwa hii vika yetu. Situko pamoja jameni.
So mimi nasema asanteni sana Mungu wetu awabariki awatende vyema uh, there will be no ribbons to cut this morning like I said there are no balloons to blow uh, and no lights to go up because we were not coming to launch the city this morning we were coming to start the engagement with our people and to open the doors for this team to continue with the, with the engagement and then you will invite us and tell us now we are done with the discussions these are the views of our people and we have compressed them and now we have this document called a charter that says that this is how our city should look like asante sana mungu wabariki na watende vyema na sema shukran sasa tumeweza kuelewa vizuri sana na kwa hivyo huo ujumbe tunaubeba tunaupeleka kwa hii mji wote ya kwamba sasa tunaelekea safari ya kupata mji wetu gavana jambo moja ningeweza kukuomba ni ya kwamba unapoenda katika council of governors gavana wetu jilani gavana kangata na gavana wa machakos pia wao wa support kwa nini gavana hii tauni yetu uh, unapojenga stage ya kiabu, uh, emini ya thika town haujengei hata watu wa, wa town wa town ya thika hii belt yote ya kwenda juu ambako mimi nilizaliwa before i got married here uh, before i got uh, married here ambako <laughs> ambako tunatoka na PS Mwaura there is a region called Gatakaine the far end it belongs to Muranga those people they come for services here in Thika all the way from Gatakaine for those who knows here if you come you get a stage to go to Kegumoine Kigumo you get a stage for Nyeri you get a stage for Donyo Sabuk so as you've said we'll accommodate every tribe every people but the region must support our governor that this dream must come to reality a reality because it's having the whole region so thank you so much and we wish you well and may the lord bless us